Hello there and welcome to this Estranti Bite Size video. What you see in front of you is an extract from our F3 topic on mergers and acquisitions. Now, why would we learn about mergers and acquisitions? Well, it's an important strategic decision for businesses to make and it's important they understand why they're making it, for what reasons they want to conduct it and the risks involved. And this topic is important throughout the SEMA syllabus, especially when it comes to things like in F2, because you need to understand how to consolidate group accounts, in P2 when you need to make investment appraisals, and especially in the MCS exam where it's quite popular to ask questions about mergers and acquisitions and to assess whether they're appropriate for a business, as well as for the strategic case study exam, of course, as well. And so without further ado, I'm gonna hand you over to our tutor, Pete Stiff, who will walk you through this extract on mergers and acquisitions. So let's take a look at some of these reasons for acquisition. And the first one is probably the most obvious one. It's probably the one that all of you thought of, and that is to increase revenue and increase market share. So absorbing a competitor means more market power. If there's a power tool manufacturer and it purchases another power tool manufacturer, it now has a larger share of the power tool market. That also makes them a more powerful company in terms of their own market power. So in terms of dealing with suppliers and dealing with buyers, when there was lots of smaller companies that were selling power tools, the buyers perhaps had more power. But now that there's one big, large power tool company, that company can dictate its own prices. And the same goes for dealing with suppliers. They now have more power over their suppliers. So it reduces the supplier power market forces affecting the organization. Another is economies of scale, being able to remove duplicate operations to reduce costs. So an example of this, again, could be a power tool manufacturer. And this power tool manufacturer has its own accounting department and it has its own human resources department, etc. And it purchases another power tool company, which also has its own human resources department and its own accounting department. Now, there's no need to have these two separate departments once the company comes together. There's no need to run two simultaneous human resources departments and two simultaneous accounting departments. You can merge them together and just have one human resources department that probably needs less costs, needs less staff than the two when they were running separately. And they can just deal with the human resources, deal with the accounting for the entire larger organization. Another example of reasons for acquisition is to access new markets. So perhaps purchase a company in a country that you want to enter so that you've got a way into that country rather than trying to expand organically into it. And an example of this was a Chinese media company, Dalian Wanda. They acquired the US company ABC and that provided them with access to the US market. And it would have been a lot harder for them to have naturally and organically just expanded into the US market. So it was a far quicker or effective way of reaching that market by purchasing a company that was already big, was already present in that market. And another reason is to purchase products or brands. And this is useful because it gives them quick access to the company's products or the company's designs. And this is particularly useful when a lot of buyers are very loyal to a particular product. It's very difficult to try and get those buyers to move to your product. So what you might do is just buy the company that makes the product that they are loyal to. And particularly in tech companies and companies and industries that rely a lot on intellectual property, it can also provide them with access to patented products. An example of this was when HP bought another computer company for $25 billion. And that then gave them access to all the different products, all the different intellectual property that that company had. 
And companies like Google also do this. Companies like Microsoft do this. They see that there's a smaller company that's got a really useful bit of intellectual property that they want to purchase and integrate it into the greater Microsoft group of companies, etc. So they purchase it. So then they now own that design. They own that intellectual property. Some more reasons now. On selling. Now, on selling is where you now can sell your existing products to the customers of the company you've just purchased. And also, you can take the products of the company you've just purchased and sell those products to your existing customers. So again, for example, using a power tool manufacturer, if you've got one particular power tool manufacturer, power tool manufacturer A, and they've got a particular range of products that they sell to their customers. And they purchase power tool manufacturer B, and that gives them access to new customers and also new products. They can take power tool B's products and sell them to their existing customers. They can also take their own products and sell them to power tool company B's customers. Asset stripping is the next reason we are going to look at. And this is something that Hanson Trust used to do, the company that we used in the conglomerate example. And this essentially involves purchasing companies that are undervalued. They perhaps have lots of assets, but their finances aren't very good, so the companies are undervalued. So they purchase the company and they sell off or the various different assets. So an example of this could be a football team. A football team that's really, really struggling financially. It's making losses year after year after year. So the actual value of the company is quite small. So a company purchases that for a very low price, knowing that they've actually got some players that are worth quite a lot of money on the transfer market. So they purchase that company and then sell off all the players and make a profit. Control is another reason to help control the supply chain. And we actually discussed this in the previous section. So looking at vertical integration, we had the orange juice company, the orange juice company that might purchase a grower of oranges to have more control over the supply chain. Now on to diversification, and this is all about reducing risk. So there's some overlap here between a financial strategy and a risk management strategy, but it's all to do with being less dependent on your existing market. So if anything happens to your existing market, your business is protected and the impact on your business is mitigated. And this is generally done through horizontal acquisition and integration, not exclusively, but it's the least risky way of doing it because if you conduct vertical acquisition integration or conglomerate acquisition integration, there's an added risk factor there because it's an industry, it's a business that you are not familiar with. So you have to tie that into how risky it actually is. If you purchase an organization industry that you have no experience in whatsoever, there is inherent risk involved there. So it's often done through horizontal acquisition because the company already has experience. And it's typically by purchasing a similar company in a, another country. So you've got two different markets. An example of this is the Chinese company ZoomLine that purchased a US company. Now ZoomLine was based in construction and so was the US company. But by making this horizontal acquisition, they were now protected more because if something were to happen to the Chinese construction market, that would have a huge impact on the organization because they were solely dependent on the success and the growth of the Chinese construction market. But by purchasing an American construction company, they have split their risk. So if something happens to the Chinese market, they've got the US market that they can fall back on. So it's mitigating the impacts. 